the deal my people Teflon in the building with another Game of Thrones video and it seems that the Starks have ended up in the position that everybody would want them to be in. It seems that everything worked out for the Starks in the end but I must remind you of the words of Ramsay Bolton. If you think this has a happy ending you haven't been paying attention. And I don't think many people have been paying attention. I think many people have just been happy with the ending because it happened to the Starks. The Starks finally get their revenge. They finally get their just due. But that is too much of a fairy tale, people. You got to remember, this is George Double R. Martin's book. He would not have it end that way. It's real nice to think that Sansa Stark could go from being prisoner with Joffrey, hiding out with Littlefinger, getting raped by Ramsay Bolton, all the way to Queen of the North. Seems really good to see Arya Stark watch her father get beheaded, go through everything she went through at Harren Hall, come back from across the narrow sea, kill the phrase to avenge her family at the Red Wedding, come in there, kill the Night King, and then sell off to west of Westeros. Seems real nice that Jon Snow would finally become the man he was supposed to be. That people would say, hey, you're not a bastard, but you are the rightful king. Execute the queen and get sent back to the wall, to the wildlings, to the people he always wanted to be around to begin with. That seems very fairy tale to me. But maybe it's me. Or maybe y'all just too much fanboying the way it ended. And let me not forget, according to Tyrion, the person with the best story in all the Game of Thrones, Bran the Broken. A kid who was pushed out of a window, got no legs, becomes the three-eyed raven, and is now the king of Westeros. Now that would seem good if that were the case. But unfortunately... That is not the case, because Bran Stark is not the king of Westeros. Bran Stark has never sat on the Iron Throne whatsoever. In fact, Mira said it a long time ago. You died in that cave. Yes, Bran Stark did die in that cave. In fact, this was a plan by people who figured this out long ago, before Bran Stark was even born, exactly how they were going to pull this off. Bran Stark has never sat that Iron Throne. The person sitting on that Iron Throne is a Children of the Forest. Bran Stark was body snatched, just like Blood Raven was. And now the person that is a call, the last green seer, is sitting on the Iron Throne. Now I know this might be hard for most people to believe, because this wasn't spelled out directly for you in the show. But I guarantee, in the Blood Moon prequel, you will see that this is the case. And what I'm going to do, is I'm going to spend the next four videos, and I'll put all these videos in the playlist, explaining to you exactly from the beginning how the children of the forest plotted to get the iron throne and how finally at this time with Bran Stark they succeeded in doing so these body snatches had this planned out for a very long time and in these next couple of videos I will explain to you exactly that it was you you made the white walkers we were at war. We were being slaughtered. Our sacred trees cut down. We needed to defend ourselves. From whom? From you. From men. So make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you could be notified every time I upload a new video. It wasn't man who brought war to Westeros. Long before man knew of this land, its soil was soaked in blood. In the dawn of days, the children of the forest warred with the giants. Not for who should rule the continent, or who should rule over both of them. 
The children fought and hunted with dragonglass spears and arrowheads. The giants pulled down branches and threw stone. Later, across the narrow sea, crossing to the land from the arm of dawn came the first men. Men were not like giants and did not live in the open land, sleep beneath the stars. Men farmed the lands and built houses and towns and other structures. As the children lived long lives but were so few, man lived short lives and were so many. And with great numbers came the great need for great resources. So man chopped down more trees, built more farms to feed itself. While in the great forest gaining supplies, man stumbled upon a sight unseen. A white tree with red leaves and faces carved into them. Eyes and mouths that dripped with substance that looked like blood. Man feared these trees, but the faces never spoke as they cut them down. No man knew what a weirwood was or that it would grow for all time if left alone, or that the children believed that the spirits of their ancestors lived in these trees. The children seen stumps of which great weirwoods that stood for thousands of years grew, dripping with sap and grew furious. For these trees were the children's graves, and their limbs were their ancestors' bones. Driven by anger and hatred of man, the children attacked. But the weapons used to kill giants weren't as effective against man. Their dragonglass spears broke against bronze swords. Their dragonglass arrowheads could not penetrate bronze shields. Losing the war, the children were forced to use magic to save themselves. They body snatched wolves and bears, snakes and giants, cave lions and eagles, and also humans to fight for them. The first men thinking that the children were using the weirwood trees to spy on them burnt every weirwood they came across. In a desperate final act, to stop the flow of men from coming ashore, the children used a forbidden spell. The green seers called down the hammers of water, breaking the armored door, killing hundreds and thousands of men, women and children in the process. Then they flooded the neck to keep the men south and from crossing up north. But this didn't work. It only made man more desperate to kill all the children they came across. The children knew that they could not stop the flow of the tide of men, and they had to do something. They knew that if somehow they could turn man against itself, they might have a chance to win this war. After hundreds of years of battles, the wisest of both sides met on the Isle in the God's Eye to form the pact. The children gave up the lands except the deep forest. The first men agreed to no longer cut down the weirwood trees and keep one in every castle they built. And this ended the Dawn Age and began the Age of Heroes. Now, as we can see here, the children of the forest were not these little elf-like creatures. These were creatures who hunted. They did not farm. They did not eat fruits and vegetables. They ate meat. They liked to war. They fought wars against the giants, not to see who would conquer the world, not to see who would rule the both of them, but they fought these wars for fun. They fought these wars for sport. Now they did have a legitimate beef against the first men. The first men did come across and cut down their weirwood trees. But as we can see later on, when they do have the pact, they were able to explain to the first men exactly why they did not want the weirwood trees chopped down. In the beginning, they did not go this route. They did not try to make a political solution to this. Instead, they tried to wipe the first men off of the planet. They tried to kill them all. And I think something that people do not bring up, and they should, is when they destroyed the Arm of Dawn, they killed hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that were living on the Arm of Dawn. They didn't just kill men. They killed women. They killed children. And they did this with no respect for human life. Now you're gonna hear people in this community especially because it's put in the books like it's sweet. And what I'm talking about is warging and skin changing. Now they make it seem like it's this great ability. There's something that the children of the forest do and it's something good to be done. This is actually what I call it body snatching. This is a disgusting ability. This is taking over somebody's body and making them do your will. And body snatching is the children's MO from the beginning of time. They do not have the numbers to fight war, so they cannot lose men. They cannot lose children of the forest. So they body snatch other creatures with no regard for their lives, whether it's a snake, 
whether it's an eagle, whether it's a dire wolf, whether it's a giant, or whether it's another human being, they take them over and sacrifice them, are willing to kill them in order for them to meet their goals as long as they don't die. And this is what they have done from the beginning of time and this is what they continue to do. Now even with all the body snatching going on, even with them using more magic and flooding the neck, drowning more people, drowning more hundreds of thousands of human beings in the process so that they could not come no further, the children still were not able to stop men. And they knew that they had to stop this war because even if they would eventually be victorious, man would have burnt down every wood tree on this continent. And they had to stop this from happening. So that is why they came to a political means at this particular time and formed the pact. But before that happens, I said in that piece that the children of the forest knew that if somehow they were able to take man's numbers and turn it against him, that they would be able to win this war. And that was their plan. When they signed this pact, they, all they did was try to buy time for themselves to get their bigger plan into effect. Of course, one of the first things you heard me say was the children of the forest live long lives. And they were playing the long game, knowing that man did not live as long as them. And that was their plan from the beginning. They can go hundreds and hundreds of years. So why man was thinking that they were prospering during the age of heroes, the children were plotting in the background and plotting all the way to present day to get what they needed. And that was the land of Westeros and get revenge for them chopping down all these weirwood trees. And we also have to understand the children of the forest had the ability to see the future. They knew exactly what was going to happen and they knew how this plan had to play out. And that is why in the next video, part two of this video series, I will explain to you exactly the long night and how the Targaryens played a major role in the Children's of the Forest's major plan to take back this continent. And also look for my new podcast, The Lady and the Dons with LMR debuting next week and we will break down all the chapters from Game of Thrones starting with the Winds of Winter sample chapters. It will be available on YouTube but also on iTunes and anywhere else podcasts can be found. So make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. Until next time, peace and stay sexy.